Whoo! Looks like this bad boy's time is coming up. And it's coming up real soon. And we finna get into it. But first, intro. Yo, what is good, fam? Bam, it is your boy Jason JV saying welcome to another reaction video. And no, this is not an art of dialogue video. This is uh, a video coming from a YouTube channel called Spill Today. And this is one of those um, AI voiced channels. I kind of got a little sneak peek into this video. And uh, yeah. And I don't know about y'all, man, but these AI voiced videos, man, they be, they be something else. Um, they can't even pronounce certain people's names correctly. I'm, I'm just saying. Um, I would like to see people who are typing out the prompts for these voices to read to just, you know, implement a little cheat by misspelling certain words so you can get that voice to say what you want them to say. I'm just saying. Otherwise, stop being lazy and just do the shit yourself. Bruh. But anyway, um, enough of the nitpicking, enough of the complaining. You know what I mean? Time to get to the meat and potatoes of this vidya, which y'all came to see. And that is um, from Spill Today. This is a video simply called Diddy Panics at the long list of witnesses to testify against him. Now, in case y'all don't know what's going on and what this is all about, this has uh, basically everything to do with the whole uh, Tupac murder mystery now being solved. They just arrested um, this individual who goes by the name of Keepy D or Dwayne Davis. Um, and, uh, yeah, he has been taken into custody. Um and apparently um he has given out diddy's name he said diddy was the one who allegedly ordered the <clears throat> allegedly ordered the hit on uh, tupac and suge knight um allegedly diddy has offered a million dollar paycheck to uh keepy d and supposedly the money never got to him because uh one of uh keepy d's uh cohorts um a person who was by, who was going by the name Zip, apparently he got the money and he never uh, gave handed the check over to Keepy D, and so he made out like like a bandit, I guess, in in that regard. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get into this vidya, and I will get into my thoughts on this on this craziness that's going on, man. Anyway, without further ado, I'd like to hear here. Do you feel like Puffy owe you? Yeah, he should. I think he should look out. He look out for everybody else. You know what I'm saying? I seen he brought that dude. Shockwaves have been felt all around. See, so there you go. You got confirmation from Keefy D that uh, Diddy is involved, you know, with with the murder of Tupac. So around the industry due to Keith D's recent arrest. The complexity of Tupac Shakur's M case has risen with each new development, leaving the general public and law enforcement baffled. Now, several bad boy musicians have been rumored to come out with information on Diddy's alleged involvement in the headline renting hearing, and that has allegedly made him panic. Diddy made a lot of people mad and upset, and he may be losing some of his power. Many are left wondering, and I have to agree with Gene Deal there because, yes, uh, we have many bad boy artists, former bad boy artists, speak out against uh, Diddy as far as how he treated them and screwing them out of their publishings and everything. And it is now believed that he's given up his publishing now um, because he's trying to save face because apparently he seems to think that these former artists um, will basically testify against him. Can't say I blame them. Um, but it is also it has also been reported that the reason he's also giving up publishing for these artists is because basically they're no longer worth anything to him. I mean, look what happened after Biggie died. You know, Puff, you know, put out more music with with Biggie's voice um, afterwards and was able to profit off of um, off of Biggie's name even after his death, which is uh, all kinds of wrong. I never bought the the uh, the. Uh, um, notorious album because I did not really not that I, I didn't want the record or anything I didn't want to hear um, any new songs from Biggie but I didn't feel it would be right to buy that record because who's profiting off of that record you know what I mean um, it wasn't um, Biggie's mom Valletta Wallace if 
however, she decides to put out some unreleased material from Biggie. Now she would make the money, but at the time, no, but uh, Puffy and Bad Boy were profiting off of that music. So, yeah, I couldn't, in all good conscience, b buy that record. But I don't know. Maybe um now that Valletta has the publishing, maybe I will go back and get that record. <clears throat> but anyway, um, I know Mace has spoke out, has been very outspoken against Puff. Uh, I believe, I want to say it's 112, but not 112, because really I haven't heard anything from them. But the Locks, I know, have spoken out against Puff as well. So yeah, Diddy has made some enemies from, with his own uh, roster of talent that he had on his label. So, got nobody but, but himself to blame for that. You blew it. Wondering why these musicians, who may put Diddy in grave danger, appear to be suddenly eager to testify. Apparently that's because Diddy has perfected the technique of turning his once loyal performers into rivals over the years yep. since he started the Bad Boy Record Company. So, there are clearly many compelling reasons for them to be willing to damage him if they can. He took me to Puff. So he went to Howard to go. You know, like if I didn't knew Puff at that, if I knew it would have gone down the whole list. I should have knew Many have speculated that it has something to do with the recent reports that Shug Knight plans to testify against Keith D. That's why I had about these damn AI voices. They can't pronounce these people's names right. They call Shug Knight, Shug Knight. What? Given this new information, Diddy could be the top suspect. According to reports, former music mogul Shug Knight, what? an eyewitness to Tupac Shakur's M, has broken his silence in light of the recent arrest of Dwayne Keith D. Davis. Many wonder how Knight feels about the arrest, given that he was in the car when Tupac was shot and K. You know, me and Keefe D played on the same Pine Water football team. And whatever the circumstances, if he had an involvement with anything. A, the former Death Row Records CEO, now behind bars, recently spoke on the phone about his feelings regarding his arrest and possible trial cooperation. This interview, conducted by TMZ, revealed Knight's thoughts on Keith D's arrest and his potential role in the impending trial. The big man said, There were only two people in the car, and Pac's not going to be able to tell the story. Pac. I ain't going to tell the story. Given previous claims that four people were in the car with Tupac at the time of the shooting, this information caused quite a stir among the public. And see, and that's the thing, too. Yeah, of course, Suge is not going to testify. Why? Because. Suge actually lives by the code of the streets. He he doesn't want to have that snitch coat on him while he's behind bars. Now, I don't know. I mean, so I, I understand that could be what it is. That's, I mean, because the man has to live with, with, the, uh, with those inmates, you know what I mean, at the end of the day. So I, I get that. But I don't know. I mean, when it comes to the matters of Wanting to figure out, wanting, wanting to get this case resolved as to who killed Tupac, who was responsible, who was all involved. I'm, I'm likely to, to I, I'd be willing to bet that even those inmates would understand and be like, yeah, you know, hey, the world deserves to know who was involved, who, who killed Pac. You know what I'm saying? Like, dog. I mean, do you really think they would hold it against him if he, you know? testified I don't, I don't think they will but then again i've never been to prison i don't know how those inmates think so i could be wrong uh the only way you can get should to testify is if you offer the one thing that matters most to him and that's his freedom that's it that's the only way if you're if you're not willing to uh you know release him from from prison in exchange for him to testify he's not going to testify there's, there's nothing that you're not giving him the, the incense the, the incentive to want to testify public Knight seemed somewhat aback when TMZ asked for his thoughts on Keith D's arrest his disinterest in Keith's impending imprisonment was quite clear he let's get one thing straight first and foremost me and Keith D played on the same Pop Warner football team and whatever the circumstances if he had an involvement with anything if he didn't have an involvement with anything I wouldn't wish somebody going to prison on my worst enemy the district attorney claims that Keith D and then that's where he and I differ, because I would. ...was in the car with his nephew Orlando Anderson during the fateful day, and that Orlando is the prime suspect in the shooting death of Tupac. But Knight's version of events is very different. There were only two of us in the car that night, he says, but he won't say anything else about what happened. There was only two people in the car. 
and Pac Master to tell the story. Tupac's brother, Moprim Shakur's recent interview with The Art of Dialogue, points to an interesting confession tied to his brother's M. He spoke on rumors that Diddy had something to do with it, which he'd addressed and fed into before. In fact, it seems like during plenty of interviews with Keith D, he brought up the bad boy mogul's name quite often. However, at least based on Moprim's experience, he's been defending his innocence for years. Furthermore, the rapper told the outlet how Sean Combs called him in the early 2000s to deny his involvement. Now, why was he calling me, reaching out to me? Because LA Times had just dropped, uh, it was in the early 2000s. The boy Puffy called. And, and here's the thing, and they're about to talk about this too. Um, according to Mo Prime, because I watched that Art of, Art of Dialogue video, and Mo Prime said that uh, him and Puffy, they, they never met. They never really knew each other. So why would Puff go out of his way and call Mo Prime to tell him, hey, I have nothing to do with your brother's death? Um, okay. Huh? Like, that's... I don't know if... I don't want to speak for, for uh, Mo Prime as far as how he should react. So I'll, I'll say this. If I was him, I would find it strange that being that I never spoke to Puff before, I never met him, if I was in his shoes, I'd be weirded out by that phone call. I'd be like, okay, why is this dude calling me? I mean, we, we don't know each other. We never met. You know what I mean? I don't really care for a dude like that. Why is he calling me? You know what I mean? And re refreshing my memory and not allowing me to, you know what I'm saying, uh, to just move on, move forward and whatnot. Like, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't need that, that phone call. But that's me, though called me though mo prem shakur's words on diddy began puffy called me back in the day i just want you to know i ain't have nothing to do with your brother i know who you are but we never met i just wanted to call you man to man tell you that you know that i had nothing to do with your brother's death now why was he calling me reaching out to me because the la times had just dropped in the early 2000s an article in the newspaper implicating him as well i told him i appreciated the call but the truth is yet to come out so we're gonna see well i think him and See, and I, I, I like Mo Prem's, uh response to that. It's like, all right, if if that's true, then I guess that's what we're gonna learn. You know what I mean? If, but sooner or later, the, the yeah, truth is gonna come out, and I believe it will. Cease was on the radio out here. Mo Prem Shakur continued. Big Boy, shout out to Big Boy. He hit me up and was like, yo, man, you know Puffy didn't want to talk to you about the whole situation with your brother. Especially back then, I wanted all the information I could get. I heard what he said, but this S been so chaotic, I ain't know which way to go until you gather more information. Yeah, man, you know, he could have been trying to cover his A or he could have been sincere. We go and see. You know, you got people like Kading, he went on. He's out doing interviews. It'd be feeling like he got simple sympathy for Puffy because he was scared. Yeah, he was scared. Yes, I agree. I do agree that he was probably terrified for his life. So if that is the case, it's also quite feasible that he put up money to get Pat K. You know what I mean? That's weird. We gon' see. Time will tell. On top of it, he had his own problems with Shug before Pac. I get it, you should be scared and, like I said, Pac would have boxed him. Pac would have loved to beat his A in the ring, raise some money and give it to the hood. It ain't have to be like this. So from what he knows, Mo Preen will likely take to the stand to tell the jury what he knows about Diddy's involvement in Pax M. It is But that's the thing. See, Mo Preen, I think, knows just as much as we do as far as that goes. Or I don't know. Or who knows? Because, yeah, him and Pac were, were real tight. And But um, as the AI narr narrator mentioned, too, um, I guess he had issues with, with Suge as well. So who knows what Suge may or may not have told him, you know? So... Like he says, man, we'll, we'll see what happens. It has also been said that Shug is not yet ready to testify. When pressed for more information, Knight commented on his refusal to testify, saying he would never voluntarily take the stand against anyone, regardless of their involvement, because he wouldn't wish a prison sentence on even his toughest foe. To distance himself from Keith D's words and the case's developments, he adamantly stated his intention to remain silent on all, all matters related to the incident. If you are called to testify in this case? I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be. Why not? A new layer of intricacy has been added to this never-ending mystery by Knight's refusal to testify and his cryptic comments about Tupac's shooter. 
A lot of people have tried to figure out what Knight is trying to say, but he seems to be adamant about not talking about what happened that night. If you believe him, I'm not going to get on the stand and testify. 1000% I wouldn't go, he said. I wouldn't testify, none of that s. At the end of the day, free Keith D. Knight's decision to not testify or cooperate is understandable, given the circumstances. Given that he is not scheduled to be released from prison until 2034, protecting his good name there is of critical importance. Witnessing or assisting in any way could damage his reputation among his fellow convicts. Given that he has yet to serve a significant amount of his sentence, it appears that he has chosen to put serving the remainder of his sentence ahead of any role in this high-profile case. Yeah, because he, like, like I said earlier, man, it, you have to give Suge an, an incentive to want to testify. The only way to do that, you offer him his freedom. You give him his freedom in exchange to testify. And that's the only way. Because here's the thing. He testifies. Let's, let, let's say, hypothetically, he decides to to testify he's working with the police he's working with the law he is now an, an informant he is now a a rat in his view in his mind and he still has to again serve the rest of his time live with those inmates you know what i mean and he's probably not sure how they would they would uh treat him if he works with the law so you know he so he doesn't want to wear that that snitch coat that's just that's how Things are inside that prison, I guess. Well, number one, okay, because I'm not going to get on the stand and testify on somebody for what? The same sources that say he's trying to protect his name also say that Knight isn't ready to acknowledge that Orlando is involved in Tupac's death. Yeah, see, exactly. Like, he's not going to get involved and testify. For what? For what, what, what good does it do for him? Keep in mind, he's a businessman, so... You know, you got to offer him something that is worth him to take that stand. And that Diddy would have trouble if he doesn't testify against Keith, he said. But I can tell you this. I never had nothing bad to say about Orlando because he wasn't the S. It wasn't Anderson. So that's all I got to say about that part. In the weeks before Keith's arrest, a witness testified that Orlando Anderson was not the S. And Knight's comments echo those of that witness. Testifying before a Las Vegas grand jury, this witness said that DeAndre Big Dre Smith was responsible for shooting Pac. Smith was reportedly a passenger in the back seat at the time of the incident. According to the investigation, Keith D was driving, and Anderson was in the passenger seat next to him. Keith D and a passenger named Terrence Brown were in the front seat. Along with Keith e. D, the driver is a guy named Terrence Brown. They call him a bubble up behind the driver is DeAndre Smith. He's in the left rear passenger seat. Keith D is the only one suspected of being involved in this. Anderson allegedly planned the shooting as an act of retribution after he and his crew were attacked by Tupac and his crew in the MGM Grand Lobby on September 7, 1996. A BMW sedan carrying the late rapper and Knight was ambushed and shot near the intersection of East Flamingo Road and Coval Lane many hours later. Famous for his song, All Eyes on Me, the rapper was shot four times and his label boss was struck in the head by a bullet fragment. Despite this, Knight's refusal to testify has fueled widespread speculation, with many now looking to Diddy as the most likely remaining suspect. Tupac had earlier implied that Diddy knew of another shooting, which raised suspicions that the bad boy mogul was also involved in Pac's assassination. This new information increases the mystery surrounding the case. And uh, Puffy wanted half the door, and so it was just a, it started out as kind of just a, a money beef. According to these rumors, Diddy faces grave danger from his long list of opponents, many of whom are prepared to testify against him. WAC 100, a notable hip-hop boss who has recently earned significant unfavorable publicity for contentious statements he made, is apparently the first willing witness. WAC is a prominent American hip-hop record executive who is responsible for the formation and running of records several companies. You know, blood is outnumbered everywhere you go. <laughs> right. But I, you know. He has managed to create an amazing career despite the many questions that have been raised about him. 
Musicians and artists usually take up most of the news space, but WAC 100 has been making more and more media appearances recently, giving fans a glimpse inside the mind of the man behind the music. Oh, I'm a YA baby, so I'm a firecracker, right? Right, right. So I jump up, tell them where I'm from. I'm the only one in there from the red side. In the wake of the untimely M of hip hop sensation and rapper Nipsey Hussle, AKA Ermias Asgidum, WAC 100 released an extremely divisive remark. He commented that Hustle deserved the results that he got. While this perspective may have garnered some support, it undoubtedly angered many of Hustle's diehard supporters. Wack has been called. Now, in all fairness, I didn't hear uh, Wack 100 give give his statement in regards to Nipsey Hustle. I heard about it. Um, I don't know if I would agree that Nipsey got what he deserved. Again, I, I would have to listen to how he gave that statement to really give my true, honest opinion. But if this is anything to go by, I mean, I don't think anyone deserves uh, to be murdered, you know. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, so I, I, I think that's that's a pretty messed up thing to say. But however, there is something that he does say that I do agree with. ...an idiot before, but that hasn't stopped him from speaking his mind and defending his remarks. When asked about his thoughts on the late rapper Nipsey Hussle, he stated bluntly that he did not believe Hussle had become a legendary figure despite his untimely death. Wack explained his decision by pointing out that Hussle had only put out one album, which is far less than the volume of work usually linked with artists considered to be legends. He said, he wasn't. What's a legend? Define a legend. Let's keep it real. If Dr. Dre died right now, we'd say we lost a legend, right? Based upon what? Numbers, right? Body of work, right? How many albums did Nipsey drop? One album, right? This is not no personal S. This is the... See, now, now this statement I do agree with. He He's not wrong here. I'm probably going to get some diehard Nipsey fans, you know, bombarding my comment section and uh, talking their, their stuff to me. But hear me out before y'all start busting out your your pitchforks and torches and everything because here's the thing biggie dropped two albums well technically three now he has three albums out now uh, unfortunately he didn't get to see the uh, drop of his second album because he was unfortunately uh taken from us before his uh second album life after death had dropped and then of course he didn't see his notorious album drop at all um, so he's got a few albums technically under his belt, you know, and all those albums, uh, sold. So yeah, again, body of work and, you know, and Biggie, so yeah, Biggie, you know, is, is a legend based on his body of work. And yes, Dr. Dre, someone who's done more, look at Dr. Dre's body of work from when he first started, like when, or when he first blew up rather with NWA and then, of course, his body of work with Death Row Records, and then his body of work with Aftermath, you know what I mean? Um, and, like, through music, film, and whatnot, Dre has done a lot more uh, with his career that would qualify him to be a legend. You know what I'm saying? Look at Pac. You know, Pac has also dropped um, a ton of albums um, before his passing, so I would say Pac is a legend even before Biggie. You know what I'm saying? Um, because again, based on body of work, you know what I mean? It's all about how much each artist has done. I'm not saying Nipsey is, is a terrible artist. And to be quite honest, I probably only heard maybe like one or two Nipsey songs. I would have to really listen to Nipsey to see how he is as an artist. But yeah, the, the word legend, it's one of those words that's become so watered down because it, it, it's a term that people have been using um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, subjectively or su I, I'm, I'm blanking on, I'm thinking on the word. I'm pretty sure that's probably the word, but anyway, people are using that based on their opinion. And I'm not saying that their opinion is wrong or right or whatever. No, that's your opinion. You're entitled to it. If you believe Nipsey is a legend, you know, by your standards, that's cool. I can respect that. But if we're looking at this objectively, you know what I'm saying? The man's only dropped one record, and then that's it. You know he's done. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's not saying he he's he's a bad artist. He's not a bad artist. He's not a terrible. I'm sure he's not a bad artist. He's not a terrible artist. I should say. Um, <clears throat> but one record, yeah, that's not enough to qualify you as a legend. You have to have done more than that. You know, it's a short, very very short, limited body of work.
I would go as far and and say that um oh shoot oh I almost blanked on his name Kendrick Lamar he's done more you know what I mean I would say he's a legend before Nipsey is you know it so yeah what what Wax said right here as far as like you know what is a legend and whatnot. This is a fair and objective statement that, that he made here. Again, going back to what he said about um, Nipsey saying, you know, he got the the the, uh, the uh, he got the result that he deserved or whatever that was, meaning he deserved what, what he got when he went out. I, I don't agree with that at all. I think he was wrong and out of pocket for that. If he truly felt that way, uh, probably not something that, you know, you should have thrown out there in the open public. You know what I mean? Because... I mean, yeah, that that is pretty harsh. I mean, I, I respect his right for saying for I, I respect everyone's freedom of speech. He's definitely had the right to say it. So I, I I had to give him that, but in my opinion, yes, I do agree with those that got upset for him saying what, what he said in regards to how Nipsey went out. Again, I don't wish death on nobody. I don't feel like anybody deserves death. You know what I mean? <clears throat> but I do feel like you know people deserve the consequences for the for the decisions that they made in life and if that's what he's referring to okay then i can understand that and i can agree with that but anyway let's get back into this the real s Despite having issued an apology, Wack has stuck by his original statements and insists that his view of what constitutes a musical legend has not altered. It appears he has once again made use of this ability. It would appear that Wack 100 has been inspired by Keith D's recent incarceration to talk frankly about the consequences of this event, especially as they pertain to Diddy. Wack has been very vocal about his opinions on this. In light of Keefe's recent arrest in connection with the Las Vegas M of Tupac Shakur, Wack has shared his thoughts on the matter. Specifically, he explored how this would affect Diddy and the ongoing legal processes surrounding Tupac's untimely death. His thoughts on the topic provide a unique angle on the current debates about the case. Wack 100, who always has a grin plastered across his face, seemed to enjoy all the excitement. He made the declaration on Instagram, posting, Las Vegas police arrested a man on suspicion of M in 1996, drive-by S of Tupac Shakur, AP sources say. Then he captioned the post with the following, Bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? With the music emoji. Y'all know the bars? Wack 100 began his podcast show by making assumptions regarding Keith. I gotta say that that is actually kind of funny, you know, <laughs> going after Diddy like that. The bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? <laughs> Cause I mean, hey, if, if Diddy is involved, which is looking like he is, because there's so many people that are willing to testify against him, man, uh, dude, you 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 deserve whatever comes your way. You deserve, you know, your consequence, Diddy. I'm just saying these motivations. He suggested that Keith might be trying to frame Diddy so that he could get out of jail early. While WAC 100 echoed his doubts, he added that there had always been a go-between for Diddy and Keith D, so any attempt to link Diddy directly to the case may meet difficulties. As time went on, the topic of discussion changed to the possibility of Keith D going to trial and his chances of having the allegations against him dropped. WAC 100 suggested that Keith D might cast doubt on his own credibility by claiming that he was paid to make certain statements. He also brought up immunity agreements, which could further complicate the case's judicial proceedings. If Keith D goes to trial, he might argue that he was paid to say certain things. It's a risky strategy, WAC 100 explained. He's like Nino Brown from New Jack City. He said that if he goes to jail, Reggie R needs to go to jail too. The open discussion by WAC 100 sheds light on the latest information about Keith D's arrest and the possible implications for Diddy. It also highlights questions about Vlad's trustworthiness as an interviewee and the charges that have been made about his involvement in the incident. Then uh, listen, I put bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do? With the music emoji, y'all know the rest. A flurry of questions concerning Keith D's connections and possible accomplices in the Tupac M case has been prompted by his detention. Surprisingly, some people think Eric Von Zip was involved in the scheme. Also, Diddy allegedly broke his promise to Keith by not paying Zip, but he may have paid him. Well, he's actually with Zip, the intermediary, and they're here, they're back in LA, and Zip takes a phone call, and it's Puffy on the other end of the line. Because of the revelation of these charges, people have begun to... Okay, now I'm confused, because I thought he did pay Diddy, that is. I thought he did pay 
but he gave the money to Zip, and Zip ran away with the money. See, I don't know. See, there's some things that about this case that just raises more questions because I hear one story, now I'm hearing another story. You know, e either people were paid or they weren't. Man. I don't know. Question whether or not Diddy is involved in the Tupac M case. However, given the complexity of the case and the myriad questions surrounding it, it is essential to acknowledge that providing evidence of Diddy's involvement offers a major task. WAC 100 has been extremely vocal in their reaction to the recent events. In a prior interview, he responded to Keef D's shocking claims that DJ Quick was complicit in the M of Biggie Smalls. WAC warned against making hasty judgments, suggesting that Keef D may be using the claims as a distraction strategy. Bad boy, bad boy. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Keith D's motivation to testify has been widely speculated upon, particularly in light of his tense history with Diddy. Some people think they've had it out for a long time, and it could lend credence to Keith D's defense. One online commentator put it this way, What's crazy is KD had cancer and thought he was going to die and started doing interviews, wrote a book, and the cancer went into remission. And now his own words have convicted him. Another one added, What's sad is this investigation was as good as dead, but because he was running his soup coolers on social media, the cops had to do little to nothing to get an arrest. Another prominent person that is opposed to Diddy is the rapper Mace. Yeah, th that's that's a very good point that that last commentator made, because really all they needed was a confession, and that's what they got. They got a, a confession, you know what I mean? Dude put himself at the scene, put himself in the car, you know, so therefore he was involved. To get an arrest. Another prominent person that is opposed to Diddy is the rapper Mace. Ma oh yes, and Mace has been very, very outspoken when it comes to Diddy as far as how Diddy treated him and what have you. Uh, anyway. Mason Betha, also known as Ma Mason Betha. Mace announced his departure from Bad Boy Entertainment and the establishment of Sane Ministries in 1999. And I love Mace, man. He was he was one of my favorites on the Bad Boy roster. He was, if not my my all time favorite. I mean, those first two records he dropped, Harlem, Harlem World, and I forget the name of the, of the of the second record because I haven't played them in, in so long. But um, yeah, those first two records he dropped under the Bad Boy label, man. Those were my my favorite records. Let's go. After what he called a transformative spiritual experience, he changed his name to Minister Mace and dedicated himself to the service of God. This change represented a watershed moment in his professional and personal development. He said he was leading people, friends, kids, and others down a path to hell, and that he had departed to discover God in his heart and follow him. They say that when Mace was at the peak of his fame thanks to the success of his record Harlem World, he told a radio interviewer this, I felt like I had a lot of money, but I didn't really know who I was. I knew I had to do something other than just hip hop. But there are st You gotta keep in mind too, Mace was really young at the time when he got signed. I believe they said he was 19 when he got signed and dropped the Harlem World record. So yeah, I could, so I could totally understand him not fully, fully knowing himself at the time, not being fully aware of himself at the time, you know, but man, but to go and say that, yeah, you felt like he felt like he was leading people to all his loved ones and people that he cares about down to a path, a path down to hell, you know what I mean? And that he had to leave Bad Boy, you know, since he found God and followed the path of God. I don't know, y'all. That to me says a lot. Still some who don't know what happened to make Mace leave Bad Boy. Diddy does not let people out of their contracts by claiming to be evil guys on the inside. For a long period of time, he had Mace under contract. Despite Diddy's touching speech at the Grammys, tensions between the two artists have continued to rise. During the past event, Diddy said, Truth be told, hip-hop has never been respected by the Grammys. Black music has never been respected by the Grammys to the point that it should be. Although many artists could identify with what Diddy had to say, Mace did not. The rapper erased an Instagram post in which he expressed his displeasure with Bad Boy's label chief's treatment of him. Your past business practices knowingly has continued purposely starved your artist and been extremely unfair to the very same artist that helped you obtain that icon award on the iconic Bad Boy label. Further 
and Mace is not the only one who's made that claim. Like I said, I'm not, I believe the locks um, said something to something to to that extent as well. They've they've also echoed you know that claims as well about Diddy starving their artists and whatnot on the iconic Bad Boy label. Furthermore, he admitted in an interview that he was never compensated despite being the only creative force behind all of the Bad Boy's chart-topping singles. Hmm. The beats, you ain't getting the money, you oh, ain't shit. getting the publishing, you ain't getting the respect. And I don't think you're like that. The surprising news that Diddy was the mastermind behind Kim Porter's and Tupac's M was apparently another bombshell he dropped. Mace dropped a new single titled Oracle 2, Standing on Bodies, in which he openly attacks Combs, his former CEO and business partner. Mace raps over a mid-tempo beat with horns and 808 US, attacking Diddy's character for what he sees as the business mogul's lack of support for artists once signed to Bad Boy. I'm the ghost of Shine, I speak for every artist never spoke their mind, representing every artist that was left behind. From Craig Mack to G Def, I still remember them kids trampled. For every producer you ever stole their sample, he rapped. A sizable section of the general population also believes Wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, because there was more to that. Okay, so for every producer you stole their sample, he raps, referencing the infamous 1991 City College incident in which nine people were trampled at a celebrity basketball game promoted by Diddy. Damn was left behind. From Craig Mack to G Def, I still remember them kids trampled. For every producer you ever stole their sample, he rapped. A sizable section of the general population also believes that Kimura's death may have been misdiagnosed. The fact that the first corner was discovered dead after disclosing his discoveries concerning Kim Porter's D is the most alarming aspect of the case. Tuffy News TV was the first to report the news. I've been told that he was the head of the snake into the investigation of the passing of Kim Porter. And not only that, y'all, he was the one who initially found something problematic. Tuffy's contacts in the business world helped him find out a lot more, though. He said he got a message from a fan saying Kim Porter was supposedly trying to reach out to her personal physician, but was unable. Because of this, she committed the gravest error of her life. A shocked and devastated Diddy spotted at the home where his ex suddenly and mysteriously died. After waiting in vain for the doctor to respond, she reportedly told her daughter's father about her predicament and sought referrals from him. You are all aware that they were unable to save her. Kim, however, apparently had a sneaking suspicion of the situation, and she texted a group of her closest friends the message, He got me, before her phone was taken away by the security team deployed by Diddy. After Kim that is shady as you know what a security team deployed by diddy takes her phone after she texts somebody that they got her kim's he death he went to her residence another famous musician eminem has spoken out against diddy over his alleged role in tupac's m in his yeah and, and this is something else i wanted to address too um Yes, Eminem said in the MGK diss track that um, basically, if whenever, if Kel were to ever, ever drop a hit, that would be the day that Diddy admits he he put out the hit that got Pac killed. Um, now I know why M, M is speaking out against Diddy. I mean, it has been confirmed. You can look this up for yourself. That Eminem is on the Epstein flight log, so I, I see. So I can see why when dude is now, he's now out crying against Diddy. You know what I mean? He's calling Diddy out like, yo, you got pot killed. Dude, you're only doing that because you're trying to uh, distract uh, people's attention away from the fact that you're on the Epstein flight log. So I don't care. If you help take Diddy down, that's all well and good. But that's not going to get people to forget the fact that you're on that, that flight log. All right. That's not how that works. So anyway. In his diss single to MGK, he rapped, K-Shot, I will not fail. I'm with the doc still. But this idiot's boss pops pills and tells him he's got skills, but Kells, the day you put out a hit's the day Diddy admits that he put the hit out that got Pat K. Despite Eminem's later confession that he is playing on the tune, it caused an uproar among many prominent members of the hip-hop community and led many to believe that Diddy knows something about Tupac's M. Someone posted, 
Diddy needs to be investigated and brought to justice. There's no way these people can fabricate all these stories. There's some truth to all this. The clock is ticking and it's just a matter of time. This is the culmination of a long fight between the musicians who were abused by their label's founder, who allegedly has information about his role in Tupac's M. And that's it from us today. Until next time. All right, y'all. So that is pretty much it for the video. Diddy panics at the long list of witnesses uh, to testify that are willing to testify against him. That's what it should say, that are willing to testify against him. Um, so, yeah, feel free to share your thoughts in the comment section down below, man. Do you guys feel that Diddy is involved? And, uh, or do you think he's not involved? That, you know, this could be a, a distraction from some artists. Like I said, I feel like the only reason Eminem is speaking out against it, granted, again, M could know some things, but still, it doesn't change the fact, and it will not cause me to forget about the fact that dude is on, again, that, that flight log. You know what I mean? Um, I already spoke out against that on many videos, so I won't get back, I won't go back fully into it, um, because I made my opinions perfectly clear on that, but, um, but yeah, I think, I think, um, M and, uh, whoever else has been to that island, they should be brought to justice as well, um, but anyway, uh, going back to this whole thing with Diddy, man. I think yeah, I think it's just it's just a matter of time. I I think he he is involved. I feel like you know from what I'm hearing from all these witnesses that you know have been around him. If um, did he did he uh, definitely has some questions that he needs to answer. You know what I mean? They definitely need to bring him in for questioning and get some answers um, out of him. You know, and if he has anything to do with 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 Pac being assassinated, then Dude, dude needs to serve some time. Dude needs to be locked up. Placed behind bars. You know what I'm saying? Bruh. So, yeah. And as far as Suge refusing to testify, again, you got to give him the, the incentive to want to testify. And the only incentive you can give that man in order for him to, to uh, testify is you guys got to offer him his freedom. You know that's what he wants. Um... Do I agree that, uh, do, do I feel that like should deserve to be free? I mean, that's a whole nother video, a whole nother discussion for a whole nother time. Um, but until then, I'll keep my opinion about that to myself. And, uh, yeah. All right, y'all. That's pretty much it. Y'all know the deal. Do all the YouTube thing, things like, comment, and, of course, subscribe. Appreciate everyone who's been subscribing, engaging with the content. You know what I mean? Very much appreciated. And uh, don't forget, we got merch. And shout out to everyone that uh, who's been buying the merch. I will be forever grateful for that. And uh, yeah, till next one, y'all have a blessed one. All right, peace. Jason JV on YouTube. Uh, what's up with you, Jason JV? What up, Jason JV? I'm just sending love, peace, and blessings to you, Jason. You are my homeboy, my guy. Don't call me guy, pal. Don't call me buddy, pal. Much love to you, JV. Chris Calico. Cali, baby. Oh. What's up, JV? My name's Jimmy Patrick. I'm not happy to do it on the street. Please say what's up to me. Keep your motherfucking head up. Uh, uh, I don't know why you're sad. If you're sad, you're sad. If you're sad, you're sad. If you're sad, you're happy. I'm going to be too happy. I'm going to be expecting shit. It's like doing curves all the time. So you ready to be on the swerve. So subscribe, tap the little bell, turn on the notifications, and if you're not down with that, we got three words for you. Eat it. Yeah.